So we're in uh, New York right now, and we're, we're like about to go and shoot to create an emotion of tension and like paranoia, and there's something is going to happen, you know. Even in like a spontaneous situation, we can still create an interesting piece by just walking to the coffee shop. And I'll, I'll be doing like a few of my uh, techniques to show that we're looking through the eyes of the person. What I'll be looking for is elements that create an emotion that something scary is gonna happen with just what is happening like around you. is actually a really fun like exercise to do, you know? You don't need some high-end equipment and stuff to like shoot anything. I actually don't know what settings I use. <laughs> I just kind of turn it on and it is what it is. I have no interest in like you know, technical aspects really. I don't even know what lens this is or what like specific stuff it does. It's all like emotional and like intuitive and stuff like that. And I know that it's important for a lot of aspects, but I've like honed in on my style a lot is so I don't have to worry about the you know, technical stuff so much. I think one of the main things that I do is if I'm on a trip somewhere and I'm shooting nonstop to try to find that sort of like emotion, I usually stop shooting and then I just kind of go to a coffee shop or a park or whatever, just hang out and kind of just feel the place out and not focus so much on shooting and then like experiencing it through a lens. I think that can be one of the biggest problems of looking for your inspiration is by staying behind your lens the whole time. So I think putting it down and kind of feeling stuff out and then you see shots like, oh man, I should have got that. And then you're like, oh, that would have been cool too. And then, and then you start to feel out a lot of the different things. The reason I do a lot of the like, like blowing on the camera with the plastic bag, my fingers, stuff like that, is because it was in having less that actually gave me more of a creative mind on to how to play with it more and experiment and do more than what other people were doing because they were all comfortable. And I think having that, those uh, restraints are actually better because you can experiment with stuff. If I don't have time to get the bag out, then I usually put some fog on the lens and then as the shot goes on, it'll slowly come into focus, literally an organic dissolve in. That's why I like the bag and this is that there's such a better texture than like filters and lens flares that everyone does online. So you, everyone knows how they all look, you know what I mean? And then the reason I put my fingers in front of the lens a lot of the times, just to kind of have that kind of nostalgic quality, like you're looking into someone's memory in a very, quick, easy way, you know? I just like layers, like lots of different things happening at once. So with the chain link fence and then the tree and then the statue and stuff, it has a kind of a cool effect to it. Just so like everything is constantly revolving and turning and stuff. You know? It's mostly to create transitions. So with this pole here, I can kind of move into another shot. There's like tension in the air. You don't want it to be too smooth. And so usually I, I, like, I like to start it off smooth and then as it gets on and there's more like layers, it becomes more and more unstable. By the simple movements of making it feel like it's a mistake. And then if I do want like a smooth shot, I just use like a neck strap. I don't even have like a rig or anything. So I just like push it really hard. And with my legs, I, I, like everything's with my legs and it just kind of moves back and forth like this. When I do like a really smooth shot that like needs to be smooth for just the feeling of it, usually afterwards I like usually flick the camera or I drop it or do something so that it'll like thrust into another shot. But just to have that kind of option that it can go different places. And then if I get more bold, I'll like move this as well with my legs so it has this unusual movement. So it's like turning as it's going so it's still smooth. And it takes a few tries to get it to work right based on how the neck strap is and where it is and stuff like that. Because it's such a quick moving piece that you just need as many moving shots as possible. Especially if you're just like, like experimenting and not knowing how, it's, how the puzzle will be, will be put together. So it's just kind of messing around. <laughs> and plus a small camera, you can like fling around and you know, do a lot of interesting things with it whirling around and stuff that, that you, you'd be too scared to do with the bigger, uh, expensive camera, you know? I think like get different options if I'm able to. I mean, just because if it's a person moving around, 
I don't want to impose on them. But if it's something like this, painting on the wall, just to get different angles of it and stuff, because I don't know how I'm going to use it. Like usually when I see like a painting or a image or something, or even like a lighthouse or something that is uh, big and I want to capture it and get like a movement with it that I can't really get if I'm filming like a lighthouse. I just do like a stop motion thing into it or around it. For this, I just take like one or two steps and one or two steps. And I just have a little marker on my screen that I just line her face up with where it is just so I can crop it better in post. I think one of the main things that, that like attracts me to like a puddle shot is mostly because I don't like clean shots, like very stark clean shots most of the time. And so like a puddle is just another textured way of shooting it. So there's so many like dirty elements, rough edges and stuff like that. And there's always the option of like flipping it so it looks like it's right side up. Also the way the water is moving, if there's wind in it, you can step in the puddle and create like a transition with it. So it kind of ripples away everything and kind of have those like organic wipe. Each of my videos were like eight hours of footage for like a week trip. And now it's down to three hours because I feel like I'm more honed in on the, the, the kinds of stuff I like. and. But I usually take like a couple days to get a feel of the place and then just let the inspiration kind of build based off of that basically. My uh, current project was actually like you know, 10 hours of footage, like almost a minute. And then you actually feel bad because there's so much footage that like needs to be left out that that doesn't work. That is like shots that are so beautiful and they just don't work in the piece. And there's other shots that works really well that you don't like that much but it makes the whole piece as a whole like you know better so it's kind of a weird mixture of stuff